Hey, it's Candy. Did you know that I have a quiz to help coaches choose their niche? Yeah, I do. It's super popular and it has been taken more than 20,000 times. This is a fun quiz that takes you about two minutes to do, and it will probably give you way more clarity on choosing your best coaching niche. So now whether you say niche or niche, it's going to work for you. And if you're a coach and you have been stuck in niche indecision, wondering what to do, then you should take my quiz and find out what you learn. You can take the quiz today at coachnichequiz.com. That's coachnichequiz.com. Okay, let's dive into this week's episode. Welcome to She Coaches Coaches. I'm your host, Candy Motzek, and I'm going to help you find the clarity, confidence, and courage to become the coach that you are meant to be. If you're a new coach, or if you've always wanted to be a life coach, then this is the place for you. We're going to talk all about mindset and strategies and how to, because step-by-step only works when you have the clarity, courage, and confidence to take action. Let's get started. Hey, everyone, and welcome to this episode of She Coaches Coaches. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I've got a really wonderful guest for you. Her name is Mia, Mia Moran. Now, let me tell you a little bit about her. She is a mom of three and a coach, and she has struck her perfect balance between motherhood, wellness, and work. She supports high-achieving female entrepreneurs, who are overwhelmed with the life and wellness pieces, find their version of balance. And she's the host of the Plan Simple podcast. I was a guest on her show a while ago, and it was a great conversation. She's a best-selling author of Plan Simple Meals and the creator of the Flow Planning Method, the Flow Planner, and Flow 365. Welcome, Mia. I'm so glad you're here. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to our conversation. So let's start at the beginning. You know, like, tell me how you came to this, you know, this plan simple journey. What brought you here? All right. So, I mean, of course, because this is the way life works, there's always been these pieces of me that have been gravitated towards simplifying just whatever situation I'm in. And so, in terms of like coming into like the coaching world and really doing this as my profession, I've always been an entrepreneur. Um, I had a job, I think for a year after college (laughs) and I'm, I'm a trained graphic designer. So the, the first company I opened was a graphic design firm and it was amazing and great. And I have three children who are, oh my gosh, I can't even say I have three teens anymore because one's about to be 20. So I have I feel like I have a teen and two young adults, which is a new thing for me to say. So I have three kids. And at the time that I was in sort of the heyday of my design firm, um, they, they were all born into it. Basically, I started it about two years before my first kid. Um, they were born into it. It was just it was a great time. And and it was, you know, I I I felt very fulfilled and thought I had all the things as an entrepreneur. I had married and I'm still married to my high school sweetheart. I had these three beautiful kids. And when the youngest was one, so it was about 13 years ago, I just remember this very particular day where I was finishing up a project. And one of the things that very early on, I figured out how to balance in terms of time and simplicity was I was like, why would anyone ever work a five day week? I can totally get done in four days what I could get done in five days before kids. And I tended to leave the office by about four. So it was like three o'clock and I was staring across my desk at this stack of coffee cups. And I just remember being like, oh my God, like how did I accumulate this many Starbucks cups? It's like expensive. And I've left my desk that many times today, you know, cause it was a couple block walk. I waited in line. I did all the things. And then I was like, and I'm freaking exhausted. And if I've had that much caffeine today, and I mean, there was like six cups, it, I'm not lying. It was a bad, bad moment. <laughs> and <laughs> I was like, how am I so tired? So that really kickstarted my thing of like, there's gotta be more than all the, the boxes that I'm checking off all the things on the outside, because I had kind of gotten all, 
all the milestones that I thought I really wanted that were all totally based on like what I thought I should have, what I was conditioned to have, what magazines were saying I should have, you know, and it was like, I need to do something different. And that really started my journey of simplifying from the inside out, which was a whole different ball game. And I happened to start with food. That was my like entryway into, um, how to simplify my body basically, which was very complicated at that moment and was taking medications and was uh, overweight and doing all these, you know, th- and acting in ways that it didn't need to act at that stage in my mid thirties. And so I simplified my food and that led me to write this book and simplify our family and fast forward a little bit. So you don't have to hear all the things. When I wrote the book, um, I decided to go on a book tour. And because the book was largely about food and family dinner and families, I was like, I can't really leave my three kids behind (laughs) and be talking about this. So I took them out of school for a year. We went on the road and I met thousands of women. And I just kept looking out at these like audiences of women who like everybody looks so I was just like I was so in awe by just like the beauty of the energy of everybody you know and I could just tell that everybody kind of knew what they needed to do and for some reason they weren't doing it and so as I started asking more and more questions it became more and more clear that it was time like even if somebody knew what to do with kale which by the way when I started my health journey I didn't even know what kale was (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I felt sometimes people were way more advanced than me. Um, It didn't mean that they could make the time for it. And everybody was just feeling like there was too many things. And in some ways, as women, we do take on too many things. So I was sort of like, okay, so because nobody's changing this for us, like, how do we change it for ourselves? And I started asking lots of questions and realized that I'd been studying time for a long time. And so that's the direction that I went in was, okay, how do we solve this? How are women different than men? How are we using systems that weren't made for us? And I really went down this path of like, how can we simplify how we do our days? Because clearly it's not working to do them the way that like everyone's expecting of us. Yeah. So it started with the food. Yeah. And then very quickly morphed into the time, you know, like from that strategic place, but something that you said about looking out at women and seeing that beauty, you know, like mm. seeing the the potential of humanity and then that butt up against knowing that there was stress and imbalance and in like a deep seated, not enoughness and a deep seated doing too muchness. Yeah. Really interesting, really interesting picture. And it's so interesting that, you know, taking the kids out of school for a year and then doing this book tour really was the big pivot for you, right? Like yeah. that was, this was a sort of gap in time to see life in a different way. Yeah. And for everyone who's listening and thinking about their own practice and everything, I mean, when I say even that out loud, it sounds complicated. Like I wrote a book, I figured out how to make it a bestseller. I took the kids out of school for a year. I mean, there's nothing about that in itself that sounds simple or balanced, but the truth was is because it was coming really from deep within me, it was a really balanced move. It was at a time when I was, you know, building this new business. I had at this point started to close, like I had closed the design company. So I was building this new business. So we weren't like, I wasn't like making a living wage at that point. And I had three kids in a school that I didn't know that we could sustain. And our house was getting, feeling unwieldy. And so like to take them out of school and, and simplify how we got through a day. My kids were school age. So it's like one of the more complex times, I think to like manage all the things to just have like a limited amount of stuff in the car. It was like everything about it was simpler. Like I was so balanced the whole time. And so I really had to learn from that when we got back, but I just want to say that because I really do think you, you paused in my bio on the word, like my version of balance. And I just think that's really important. Like, because we don't find balance unless we're really living from our, our truest selves. Mm. And I, I'm assuming that this is some of the core work that you do with your people, right? Yeah. So where do, where do they start? And, you know, and 
as we're talking, sort of we're coming into Canadian Thanksgiving and into, you know, this season of autumn. Where do they start and where do they start maybe at this time of the year? Yeah. We always sort of come here, right? Yeah. So, well, so I'm trying to think of like where, where to enter this question because there's so many possibilities. Yeah. But I guess one of the things, so the process we created is called the flow planning process. And yes, it does stand for like the idea of sort of being able to go with the flow more, more but the acronym, the F is food and wellness. So food to me is still a really important part of what we think about. The L is lifestyle. The O is OM, which was a convenient word, but really stands for like spirituality and self-care and quiet and downtime um, and work. And one of the things that I really noticed um, as I was talking to more and more women is that you know, work very often, we calendar, we see in time, but then we have all these other aspects of ourselves. So we have this way we want to eat. And sometimes that comes as like, I don't know, PDF meal plans or books that we open or whatever, but, it, or grocery lists to go have, but it's not in the same place of our work and same with our spiritual practices, you know, everyone or self-care practices or just managing our energy, which everyone who's a coach knows that you have to do this work on yourself as well as, you know, so that you can show up for your clients. And all these things are part of the whole of us. And yet I was finding that they were like, you know, and then kids stuff was on the refrigerator, like everything was sort of in different places. So one of the most important things I think is to just bring all the parts of us together on paper so that we can see all the pieces and we can start to prioritize what actually matters to us, which it's hard to do in our brain because there's so many things going on in our brain. But once we get it on paper and it's like really clear about like, oh yeah, this is what's important. So, so, th so one of the things is bringing everything together. One very important thing. Another really important thing, which is actually where we start is to go out to our futures, because often when we're thinking about time, we're, we're really coming at it from our past self, right? Like, so we're coming from the self two weeks ago who didn't, who had a, a consult and didn't get a client or um, had a really hard coaching call and isn't sure that we're made for this or whatever it is. Right. And we're making choices as her instead of from the future self, a few, few years out, I love to go five years out where, you know, maybe things are different. Like the kids are older, like school pickup might not get in the way anymore, which by the way, is very sad. I'm experiencing that this year, <laughs> but like, um, you know, school pickup doesn't get in the way, like think that like you have different obstacles. And so you can see yourself succeeding in a different way. And we want to make the choices for today from, for her, not for the path, the, what already happened. And mm -hmm. so that's really where we start, but I want to include the holistic part. <laughs> yeah. So future. So basically like I, the, for me, the concept is called future self yeah. um, or in my version, candy 2.0 or candy 3.0, right. Yeah. Or who knows, depends on whatever iteration I think I'm on. So starting with that, this is like Stephen Covey, starting with the end in mind in a way. Yeah. Um, and then allowing that to inform how you plan, how you live, how you also your perspective for today yeah. too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and I think the the other piece that's really, really important and is where it's funny you mentioned Stephen Covey because I'm like, oh my gosh, he's a guy. <laughs> but but from I, I know. like because I'm always <laughs> talking about like you know what what is feminine productivity and and I think the part that's a little bit different for us is that we have this opportunity. I'm not saying that men don't have strong intuitions, but I think that a woman's intuition and a woman's ability to get centered is very underutilized because we just like we weren't conditioned really to use that, and so it's like we really want to come into our centered selves so that we're not doing any of this from a place of overwhelm or distress. Like, and we have that ability that's like really unique to us. So it's what we want to be really tapped into our intuition when we're going out to that future self. Right. And I think that feels really grounding to a lot of women. Cause I think it's our, our natural innate, like, ability and mm. and it's just we haven't practiced it possibly because 
North American society is set up based <laughs> on a different concept of time and productivity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but what, so how does that happen? Like you get the, you know, the feminine centered in intuition coming from a centered space grounded and then coming into life where so much of life is based on like, you know, come on, hop to it, hop to the clock. Come on. You got to get more done. There's a place here of trust too, where people need to learn to trust that voice. Do you have any experiences with that, that, that would help the listeners? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Like, like 5 million, all, I'm, you know, <laughs> all, all the time. Right. Yeah. And I, like, I'm just thinking of like, you know, if we're talking about growing a business, does that feel like a good place? I have a story about that. Sure. that like yeah. Okay. I love that. Yeah. So, um, you know, if we're talking about that, it's like, often we have to launch something. And so, you know, the process for me of whenever, before I do that, it's like, okay, how do I really get centered. Like I have a couple people who I love to talk to who are a few steps ahead of me. And I, I love to connect with them. I need to be outside to connect. Right. So I might go on a walk or just like go sit in my yard to have my tea in the morning or something like, so it's like, how can I get centered before I start making choices? Cause I don't want to be making choices from like, oh, how am I going to make this work? Is this ever going to work? Am I ever going to hit my goal? Blah, blah, blah. Right. So it's like, how do I get centered? How do I do that? And then I, I come back and I, I let the noise go away. Cause the truth is, is that anything that I can think of, the only reason I can think of it is because I could do it. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to think of it. I'm sure there's a million things at this point in my life that I couldn't even think of. Cause they're not even like in my realm of understanding are possible, but mm-hmm. anything that I can think of is a possibility for, for me or for you, whoever's listening, anything you think of is a possibility for you. And so it's like, So I sit down and I just dump my brain of like, what are all the possibilities of, of the the thing? And I I did this um, recently and and then I made a plan and I feel like sometimes the work and and I just went through this and, and we did hit the goal that we were looking for. And I like a million times thought I wasn't. And so a lot of times the work is like, okay, how do I come back to that center? How do I come back to that center? How do I trust? myself? How do I trust this plan? And, and, you know, every once in a while, like, I'll be like, Oh, actually this needs to change. And then, and then you can make a plan to like pivot, but it's different when it's on paper. It's different when it's like, you've, you've decided what's really important. So what we want to be putting down are the things that we know are really important. And then at some point for all of us, the noise starts to come in. We start hearing like how our friend did it and how this person five steps ahead of us did it and how all the internet people that we see on Instagram every day are doing it. And we think that our thing isn't enough. So so it's like, we need to, we need to be talking about the thing that's before all that happens because that's all going to happen to all of us, right? So a lot of my days in that situation are spent reminding my, like bringing myself back to like not getting stuck in my phone and looking at Amy Porterfield's latest launch and, um, you know, not allowing a bad like review of something to affect me to keep going on with my plan because, you know, the review had nothing to do with even what the plan is about. You know, it's like, it's like, it's, so it's a lot of that and, and making space for that. Mm. And and trust. I mean, so much trust. Yeah, I can so see that. And uh, also this idea of coming to this place where you're centered and then doing a download of all the things that are possibilities. I do a similar exercise. Um, most Mondays, I offer a free coaching and conversation for anybody in the community that wants to come in. Mm. And we always start with that. You know, it usually starts with what am I worried about today? Yeah, and just this, that. you know, what you're saying about getting it on paper, you know, so in your case, what you're talking about is getting the possibilities on paper yeah. and then from a centered place, seeing that you could select one, that they're all yeah. possible. And then to remember to not kind of head off down the rabbit hole while you're chasing yeah. the shiny object, you know, like for me, and I, and I don't know if you notice this or not, but 
oftentimes for me, what happens is it's, I get distracted. Yes. So watching the latest launch or cool idea, but the bigger thing is that I forget. And if it's not on paper, it's really easy for me to forget. And that's the place that my brain loves to protect me. It's like, oh, you forgot that you were going to do that thing. Okay. Yeah. Now we well, can, now and, we can stay safe. Right. <laughs> right. And sometimes if you don't want to forget it, you probably like keep recalling it and like imagine mm-hmm. what things are not coming through as a result of that. Right. Like, so there's no, I feel like there's no, there's never anything bad about getting things out of our head <laughs> Yeah, and on the yeah. paper, the good, the bad, the ugly, all the things, because that's how we can work with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Otherwise we don't even know they're there. We might only really have one actual thought but it's just spinning around and you know doing a pirouette here and a leap yeah. there but it's really only one thought but it's yeah. just you know doing all the stuff that's so cool so talk a little bit more about like we were talking just before I hit record about time and women and what happens at this time of the year you know, lots of, yeah. how do we make time for ourselves? How do we plan? How do we balance? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of it is just really figuring out, like, it's it's almost like I'm trying to think of, like, I'm holding up my thing and everyone's probably listening, but it's like, you know, the concentric circles that are sort of overlapping. So really getting clear about what it is that you want out of this time of year. And I find that the way that a lot of us get off track is we're just like going along with all the things because there's a lot of like outside things happening at this time of year, right? Like pumpkin spice lattes and, you know, this party this way and this tradition over here. And this is what we eat at this meal and all these different things. And, And this is how you end your year in business. And, you know, this is how you do life as a mother. Like it's, there's a lot of opinions. I feel like at this time of year in particular, just with all the festivities, because it brings back like all of our, all of our past. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, what do you really want? And so that's one question that I always ask everybody at any time. And then also it's like, what is this season for you? So oftentimes different seasons are different for different people. Like this time of year, the one of the reasons I love it the most is that I'm an introvert and I live in a cold place. And there's just like this very natural, like quieting of everything in December and January. And mm-hmm. I like crave that as a creative. So like, the, like literally some of the noise quiets down and it's like a big journaling time for me and all the things. So if I was like running around to all these places where I couldn't eat the food to celebrate with people wearing you know, whatever sweaters, the uh, Christmas sweaters or whatever the, the theme was, like, I just wouldn't be in my center. So I really want to like understand what this season means to me. And to some people, it's the season of connecting with family that you haven't been with for a long time, or like you might love all the festivities. So that's one thing. And really thinking from it, from all those pillars we talked about, because another thing that tends to happen for women is we have all these goals around our health. And then we're just kind of like, well, you know, we can tap back into this later, or we have all these ideas about growing our business. And it's like, well, we'll do this the next year. Right. And it's Mm -hmm. just great. We, We will do it next year, but like, why not finish? Like, why not be authentic and true to yourself now? And what would that look like? And then it starts to get really interesting and you start to really understand where all these things overlap and how you can make all this more your life rather than, you know, a compilation of a whole bunch of other people's lives, which by the way, is very hard to plan for. So Mm. that never feels simple. So when a lot of what you're doing is coming from the outside, balance and simplicity is, I find is much harder to feel um, because you're out, you're, you're living someone else's map. It's just, there's so many things that you said that really make me ponder. Let me just kind of figure out. So the, the place that I often see this, I'm certainly as, you know, as a person, I'm certainly better at this than I used to be, but you know, when you're talking about what do you want, you know, what do you want as an individual and then know that you're a member 
of a family. And so your partner yeah. may want something else. Your children may want something else. And so often the things that we do are just because we've always done them. You know, like, for example, the office Christmas party that everybody, you know, air quotes says you have to go to the office Christmas party. But, you know, like if you're an introvert and it, you're not wanting to go, how do you say that? Right. Like you can yeah. allow yourself just to say, no, not for me. Absolutely. Not this time. It's not it's just not what I want to do. And that's OK. Right. Yeah. So. And there's lots of places in the middle. I just want to say for anyone who's like, well, but then my husband would be mad forever. And I think some of us probably need to walk, just walk through that and what that means. <laughs> but <laughs> the other thing is, is that there's like, you might find lots of things when you do this inquiry. Like I, I will share the, this actual story that this is something we did as a family. We all went to my husband's party and my kids were young and I have three of them and it was a nightmare. I mm. left so tired. I had no desire to talk to the people and I can't eat gluten or dairy. So there, I was also, there was nothing I could ever eat. And so I was like hangry and like annoyed and tired. And like the kids were just eating sugar. Like there was nothing good about it. So I, so I decided that I wanted to be able to go, but I wanted it to be like, I didn't want it to take me out. So I started like ha having a smoothie before I went or like bringing soup if it was freezing and I brought like extra dessert things in my bag that I could have. So I didn't have an empty hand and we only went for an hour instead of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't go early, you know, and I, uh, at one point I, I found a, a person who was at the work who loved my kids. And I was like, can you just, do you, do you want to be with them for a little bit? And that was great. And then I could just go meet people that, you know, so it's like, there's always, there are always ways, but they're harder to see if you're not clear about what you want. And if you don't have that time to center yourself to even ask the question, exactly, you know, exactly. like getting on that, you know, the December, it really starts in the last week of November, the holiday season hamster wheel, right? Yeah. Like, how do you come to some kind of a compromise that works for you? When is it a yes? When is it a no? When is it a, there's something in between? And the other place that you haven't mentioned, but I'm sure is really key here is communication, right? Like communicate with your partner. Like my husband knows I'm a super big introvert. He knows that, you know, it's not my favorite thing to go to a giant party that's really loud with a million people and nobody actually <laughs> having a conversation. I know, right? right? Like he knows that, right? And so we've been married for many, many years. And so we've come to compromises and sometimes I don't go. Yeah. Sometimes I'm, I say, no, it's just not for me. And sometimes I'll go for a while. And sometimes I just suck it up. Like, it's just like, yeah, okay, today yeah. is going to be the day that we that we do that. And I'm going to find a way to enjoy it. And so what you've described is yeah. have a strategy, something mm -hmm. that works for you. But think about it beforehand so yeah. that you kind of have that plan, right? Yeah, and an introvert, introvert trick for me has always been, and then yes, if I do that, I'm not putting myself out in any way the next morning. So mm -hmm. I would say no, if the next morning I had to like be on podcasts or like post my own webinar, like that would be too much. <laughs> like I, yeah. I would need that time to like come down. Yeah, just quiet, just quiet, yeah. please. And it can't just be even a morning. I'm sorry, I would need a whole day. You need a whole right? day, yes. <laughs> right? like, just don't talk to me. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm walking around with the dog. That's all I know. Yes, that's yes, all, that's all absolutely. I need, right? <laughs> so such interesting stuff. Let me just have a look at, oh yeah, we've been chatting about all kinds of things. I think one of the things that you said, Mia, that really is, like more than anything, this is the key is to start with yourself. Yeah. You know, start with like, it's the O of your flow, right? Start there and then know what your body needs for yeah. the physical, both from a nutritional standpoint, as well as from a movement standpoint, but it always starts within. Yeah. And I think that I can see so much growth in how we live our lives, how women live our lives, different ages, different cultures, different um, lifestyles. 
but it's still a place that we have to do the work, right? Like it's not natural for us to not accommodate, to not go, well, I'll just sort of go along for the ride. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing when that is more natural, you yeah. know? So the work that you're doing with people is really making that is make it's a movement, right? It's this makes this change in how their lives are. Yeah. I love that. The the thing that I, I, I want everyone to just hear too, always is like, yes, like I'm never going to stop saying that you should start with yourself because I, I just don't think there's another way, but that doesn't mean that you're, that, that doesn't mean that everything is taking all the waking hours of your day. It just means that you're starting there, right? Like mm-hmm. it might only be five minutes a day at some point and that's fine, but at least you've like, that's the, that's the center of everything that, that all the other things are coming out of. So I think a lot of people think it just means that they'll be like, all focus on themselves the whole time. And it's not really about that. It's about just getting what matters most in first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you're there to be with the other people, do the things that, you know, you need to do, want to do, but also creating your life. Yeah. You know, it's a great legacy, great legacy for kids, for grandchildren, for our partners as well. I'm sure that there's a lot of partners that really feel like the weight of the world is on their shoulders to, you know, I don't know, to make, make them happy, you know, make their wife happy. But if the wife is like, no, 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 me, I can, I can know myself. I think there's a lot to be said there. And kids. Yeah. Hmm. Love it. Any last words, anything that you feel like you would love to share with the audience that they need to hear? What haven't we talked about? I feel like we've covered so much ground. I I mean, really, it's just that, you know, planning does not, I feel like if you're a freedom seeker, planning can sound like your worst nightmare and what you're actually trying to get out of, right? And, and yet, it when done well, I think planning is like the portal to freedom. And so I think that's really just what I want to leave people with, like just this idea that, that it could help you ha- have freedom, whatever that means for you, because you you'll make space for it. You'll make space for what you want most. And it's really hard to make space for what we want most, especially the lives that most of us are living with, with kids and spouses and parents and communities, like it's just hard. And so without really that intentionality that we can look at on paper or on our screen and know when things, what matters most is happening. It's just, it's, it, it's not freedom provoking. So planning can lead to freedom. I feel like that's what I want to leave people with. (laughs) Mm. Gosh. And personally, thank you for that because that's a place that I struggle you know, freedom is a huge value for me. And I really, you know, rankle against the planning thing. It feels like I never have gotten that place where it can be the doorway to planning mm. can be the doorway to freedom. So thank you. I know that. Okay. Can I give one more piece of that people. then? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so we've gone around actually our whole circle which is five steps of planning, which we started with center vision. We've talked about all these things, center vision, decide, and then it's schedule follow through. So Mm. where women stop a lot is the decide part. So whether we're doing that from the outside or from the inside, we tend to be like list makers and we, we sort of rebel against the calendar a little bit, but the time piece is really important because it helps us focus on and on where we really want to be spending our time. So when we don't get things in the context of how we're of like when they're happening, we can, we don't have a container for which to do the things we're doing. And that can really throw off freedom seekers. But so another way to think about it is we just kind of need to know time. So we have to feel like, oh yeah, like freedom might be having those three new clients. And so I need to have, I need to sit down in a morning, some morning that I know about and write five emails. Right. So it's like, you don't have to know that it's happening from nine to 10 or like, you know, the 15 minute increments. It's like, no, but it it does need a container. It needs to be anchored. 
in the, you know here on planet earth because that is how we can make sh- that, that's how we can get out of overwhelm and, and show ourselves that there is space for all the possibilities mm, great that's helpful super helpful thank okay. you okay all right so to wrap it up people who are listening would love to find more about you where can they find you Okay. So we have a podcast, as you said, and you have to go Google candy on it because she's been on it. So it's plan simple podcasts and that's wherever podcasts are. And also you can get to it from our website, which is, which is plan Um, And yeah, I think so. I'm on Instagram at plan simple.co and try to be as good as possible over there, but the website always has um, the next thing. And actually candy's part of the next thing, which is actually related to the holidays. Can I yeah, yeah, yeah in so, December. Yeah, so it'll it'll pop up on our website pretty soon, actually, to sign up for. But I love helping people plan December. So um, Candy's going to be one of our amazing guests who's going to share a, stra- a five minute strategy with everyone. But before we do all these five minute strategies in December, we host an event in early November for just like planning December and going through the practice of how you want to end the year in all those different categories we talked about and what you want it to look like and what it looks like to make plan in this new way. So we have that coming up. be exciting. Great. So exciting. I'm so glad that you are here. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening again this week. I know that you will have enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. We'll be back to talk to you again next week. Thanks again for listening today please hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Also, I would love to hear from you. Did something that I say resonate? What else would you like to learn about? Click the link in the player and leave a comment on the post. This is going to give me great ideas for future episodes so I can help you best. Join me again next week for more coaching, support, and teaching to help you become the confident coach you are meant to be.